You know, sometimes people interpret what I say about some types of music as if I'm really closed-minded, musically. And I, I have to kind of laugh at that. I have went out of my way, my whole life actually, even as a kid, to try to listen to as many types of music as I can. I think musical diversity is awesome. Um, you know, I've went out of my way to listen to music from the earliest of recordings, like from those old 78 RPM 10-inch records, or even the uh, rec old recordings from those cylinder records, to current. From instrumentals, to uh, experimental noise, to a cappella, to uh, just, just about everything. From music from all over the world. And I mean all over the world. Real instruments, electronic instruments, homemade instruments. I've went out of my way to listen to just about everything. And I do have my favorite eras. You know, I've talked about some of that before. Some of my, my favorite era is from before I was born, from around 67 to about to about 83, and then again from uh, maybe 89 or 90 to about 1997. And uh, I'd say the past few years, there's been some really good stuff that's come up again, too. Um, what I kind of disliked about music from... I don't know, 53 to 66 is this... There's this element where it just seems like... I mean, you can hear what happened to culture during that time. And you could... Oh, and in the later 60s, you could hear us breaking out of that. You know, you could hear it. You could hear the culture, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um... Not to say that there, there's not really great stuff from, from before then. I mean, there's some really great stuff. But, I mean, if I go by what was the most heard, um, so, you know, when I make the comments I do about EDM, I mean, some people say that it's because I'm old. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean... You know, I'm getting crotchety or something like that. And I'm just like, no. Uh, the only thing that, that's about me being old, older, I should say, is that I've been around long enough to see a lot of styles come and go. And to me, what people do, what the rabid fans of EDM will do, where, I mean, where the people that, that's the only thing they listen to, what they do when they give this tiny little variation in a style, in, in a production technique, a whole new name for a genre, or they'll add a new suffix to a genre, you know, that would be like if disco had, you know, people gave 20 or 30 different names for different types of disco. You know, yeah, there were some slight variances, but in the end, it's still disco. But with the, with EDM, people don't want to do that. The people that only listen to EDM, I'm sorry, they really don't know what musical diversity is. Or they wouldn't make these ridiculous claims that EDM, oh, it can cover everything. No, it can't. And a lot of the people that, that say these sorts of things are also people who have not studied music at all. So, of course, they don't know what to even look for. 
And some of this I kind of blame on how music education has dwindled so much over the years. There's there's a number of schools out there that does that don't even have music programs anymore. But they got sports, you know, sports, sports. So, you know, um So it's no wonder why I just I mean there are studies on this, okay? On how dumbed down pop music has become. You know, you've got these you've got these rare gems. You do. But generally there are less progressions, less different types of timings. And people will mistake production techniques for actual musical diversity. I, I, I just find that incredibly sad. I mean, that's just fucking sad. You know? There could be... You know, instead of a chord being played, they, it's played as an arpeggio. Oh, that's a new type of music! Oh, no, no it isn't. <laughs> it's just... It boggles my mind, but at the same time, I understand why it's the way that it is. And so, you know, actually breaking music part into its individual musical components is becoming a thing of the past. You know, something that, that I'm I'm dreading, and it's, if I live long enough for this anyway, it's going to happen in my lifetime, where John Williams will eventually pass. That's going to be a very sad day. We've already lost a lot of the good ones. We've already lost a lot of the good ones. You know, Jerry Goldsmith. Damn. You know? Um, I just had his name in just a moment. Uh, James Horner. Uh, John Barry. We've lost a lot of really good ones. And what we have left in a lot of movies is instead of there being an actual soundtrack, it's like rhythms and noise where it's purely designed to accentuate a scene. There, there's no more themes. One of the neat things about John Williams is, like, if anyone knows, if anyone knows Peter and the Wolf, right? If you haven't seen Peter and the Wolf, just try to look it up. I don't know if you'll be able to find it on YouTube or not. I haven't tried, but it, it's Peter and the Wolf. Every character had a theme. And they would really, they'd really go out of their way to introduce those themes. John Williams does that with the way that he writes. Every character has a theme. Uh, every sort of scene has a theme. You know, there's a love scene. And, and so that, that will mix into the themes of the characters. You know, there's always these, these themes everywhere. And that's a lost art. You know, uh... It, I just, it's... Like I said, it, it, when John Williams passes, it's going to be a very sad day. It's going to be a very, very sad day. Um... I mean, think about this. When is the last time that you... Uh, went out and bought the soundtrack to a movie. And I don't mean, you know, where there's a bunch of pop songs in it. I mean, some, where you, you bought the soundtrack to a movie, it was an instrumental. You know, it's, it's the soundtrack to the movie, the incidental music, all of that stuff. Think about the last time you did that. 
Now, this might be a thing of me showing my age, but... You know, when you think about Mazursky, Stravinsky, Shostakovich, uh, uh, Debussy, uh, 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 and then you think of Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. And then you think about music of today. And then you compare it to any of that stuff. And it's just like, wow, what happened? <laughs> you know? Um... And dissonance, dissonance, we don't, we don't seem to know what dissonance is. People don't really know how to handle musical dissonance. People will look at, I mean, the new type of dissonance is distortion. So much distortion, and that's the new dissonance. But musically, musically, even in that blah, blah, blah stuff, there really isn't that much dissonance. I mean, you rarely even hear, you know, tritones. <laughs> Here, I've been playing and I'm wrong. I'm just trying to do something simple, but, you know, you don't even hear... Uh, You don't even hear whole tone scales. You don't hear very many diminished. You don't hear very many augmented. You know, it's it's mostly going between minor and major. And you don't definitely don't hear very many complex scales. Um. And then the times that you do hear those things, like in prog rock, it ends up, the entire focus on the music is, look how great I am at playing my instrument. I am so talented. I'm so skilled. Look how skilled I am in my instrument. Instead of being about the feeling of, of uh, you know, what, what feelings can you give? No, it's about, aren't you impressed? And that's always been, a, it's just like, ah, ah. You know, it's, it's, it's something that the 80s kind of messed that all up. And that's why, you know, I, 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 my, my favorite era, you know, when it comes to music that can be complex, especially, you know, you go from 67 to about 83, and right after 83, I mean, just everything became... Just over the top, hair bands, all that sort of thing, you know? Um, it's just, it's, it's just weird to me. Um, I, I, will, I will always have these hopes that there will be this return of, I mean, because there's, there's always cyclical things about style, you know, fashion, style, uh, art, uh, even uh, house designs, uh, building designs, uh, makeup styles. Uh, uh, there, there's always these cyclical things. And so I, I have these hopes that there will be there'll be some part of the cycle that comes back from from some of the late 60s, early 70s kind of period, you know? I just have these hopes for that. And it, it might be it might be just a pipe dream, but, Some of it is also societal attitudes. Um, that whole period in which I describe, we had very, very different attitudes. I don't know whether we'll ever have the the peace that we did in that in those periods, in those particular areas in our society. Um, there was, there were, there was a bit of, there's like a storm brewing underneath, but then on the top, it's relaxed. Chill out, relax. And I don't know whether we'll see a return of that. He's not anytime soon. 
especially with how polarized things are now. So, I don't know. Maybe in 10 years, if, if we survive, you know? <laughs>